Welcome back to the Video CPA. I'm Michael Scott. I'm your host for uh, this channel, and it's good to be back with you again. Today we're going to talk about the uh, Inflation Reduction Act and the task tax aspects of the Act. Uh, so stay with me. We uh, have a couple of uh, slides here that um, uh, are general to uh, every one of uh, my uh, recordings. So. Uh, uh, we have a disclaimer here that uh, says we take affiliate money if we get it. We also have an educational disclaimer. And uh, so let's talk about the um, Inflation Reduction Act just a little bit and uh, the main aspects of the act, okay? So one of the main things is that it creates a minimum tax rate on corporations of 15%. In the past, uh, corporations have not had a minimum tax rate. And of course, if you don't make any money, there's no taxes, so the 15% doesn't apply if you don't have any taxable income. But if you have any taxable income at all, there is a minimum tax rate of 15%. Um, and that's going to affect a lot of small corporations too, if they've got uh, if they've got uh, any income whatsoever. It also imposes a 1% excise tax on stock buybacks. So. That's a situation where a corporation decides uh, that it's going to go out into the marketplace and buy back some of its own stock, a lot of times to prop up its stock price. Um, and so if they do that now, there's a 1% uh, excise tax uh, as a result of this act. Also, there's a prescription drug price reform in this for senior citizens, uh, especially involved insulin and that stuff. So the highest price you'll pay for insulin as far as I understand it anyway, is $35 a month or whatever you get your insulin. But uh, there are other drugs that are, I think, fall under that as well. So this is a very positive thing. IRS tax enforcement. Um, where, uh, you've heard uh, stories about how the IRS is um, hiring a bunch of new um, tax auditors. And uh, so that will definitely um, at some point in time uh, impact uh, the general public and uh, they say just over four hundred thousand dollars but uh, that's probably not the case now I, I do have to say that uh, as a CPA the last 15 or 20 years there have been very very few audits I mean the IRS hasn't had a chance to do uh, much auditing whatsoever and so, in some regards, this is a good thing because, uh, you know, I've, you run across people that uh, don't want to be honest in filing their taxes and they just get away with it. And, uh, but uh, on the other hand, the amount of money that's going toward this is, uh, seems just a little bit uh, uh, overreached to me on this thing. But anyway, uh, that's part of the Act. Uh, the Affordable Care Act subsidy extension. Uh, People that can't afford their insurance um, under the Affordable Care Act uh, or the Unaffordable Care Act, whatever you might, might want to say, um, do get a subsidy from the government. It was set to expire and now it's uh, being extended. Energy investments. This is a big part of this act and uh, it's energy investments for green energy. There's a lot of tax credits um, involved here for corporations and for um, homeowners um, for solar energy investments um, and uh, you know a myriad of other types of investments that are green energy type investments. Uh, deficit reduction. Now you know the estimate is that the deficit will be released will be reduced by this act by about um, uh, 300 um, billion dollars okay so the act is estimated to cost 437 billion but it's supposed to raise from taxes and stuff 737 billion which will supposedly be used to reduce the deficit so we will have to see on that and will it reduce inflation i don't know i'm going to address that in my last slide so let's go ahead on and uh, talk about you know, whether you're going to, whether it's going to change your tax return. So most people, the 1040 tax return is not going to be impacted because of the Inflation Reduction Act. 
The only way it could be is if you take advantage of one of these uh, tax credits and um, you put solar panels on your roof or something like that, uh, or another tax credit, uh, you will have to change your 1040 for that. But if you don't do any of that kind of stuff, it's not going to affect your tax return. Uh, the other way it could affect it is if you've got a pastor entity like a partnership or a S corporation, and uh, which is flowing through to your tax return, it could help you there because it does uh, lengthen the loss provisions uh, so that you can take that loss for a longer period of time. So both of these things are uh, should decrease the taxpayer's tax actually. So both of these are pretty positive. Um, so let's look at uh, let's look at another aspect though. Will the act impact your overall finances? And it's most definitely it will. I mean, it's not a direct tax on uh, individuals, but if you uh, think for a moment that um, a tax on corporations won't affect you, you need to think again because uh, corporations, for the most part, if they're able and they're usually able, they will pass the increase onto you through increased prices of goods and services. So even though you tax, if you tax a corporation, many people are all for taxing corporations, but all they do is uh, a lot of times just raise their prices and the, the public pays the tax, basically. So, so um, yeah, it's going to impact your overall finances. And basically, it's raising your tax from that standpoint because you're going to pay, uh, pay higher prices for goods and services. Now, and that's true whether it's a direct tax or whether it's an excise tax on stock buybacks. Now, the stock buybacks, uh, as I mentioned, they prop up their prices sometimes uh, by buying the stock back. And if that doesn't happen anymore and you're holding that stock, it's likely that that stock uh, is not going to do as well anyway. So uh, uh, that's another thing to uh, consider with this uh, uh, so-called Inflation Reduction Act. All right, let's look and see if the act will impact inflation. Uh, the Wharton School of Business actually looked at this and said, no, it's not going to have any impact on inflation. The Con Congressional Budget Office looked at it and um, said, no, it's going to have very little impact on inflation. It may decrease the deficit at some point in time, and that is if the money's not spent for something else. But uh, it's not going to decrease inflation. So calling it an Inflation Reduction Act is really a, a misnomer. But, um, and, and you, you know, you think about it logically, and you put billions of dollars more into the, uh, from the government into the um, um, economy, and how could, it in, how could it decrease inflation? So, um, you know, just looking at it from a logical standpoint, uh, Prices are going to go up because corporations are going to get uh, a little bit more tax on them. So, I mean, it, it seems to me like it's going to be uh, an inflation driver, but uh, the Wharton School of Business and the Congressional, Congressional Budget Office kind of think it's going to be a wash as far as uh, inflation goes. It's not going to help and it's not going to hurt that much. So, but anyway, think about these things. This is um, an act that was passed. It's got some good things about it. And uh, it's got some things that uh, really aren't so good uh, as far as impacting inflation goes. So, uh, uh, but it will affect uh, your economic um, and your financial position. So just be aware that uh, this act is out there and it's probably going to cost you more money in the long run. Well, I appreciate you being with me. Uh, thank you and for joining. And if you haven't uh, subscribed, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks.